Uh, we're using a topical anesthetic inside the lip before we block the lip. This is just a little topical that makes the injection in the lip to make the lips numb more comfortable. So it's just a little topical. Here's a little Kleenex mark for you. And then when we inject to block the lips so you don't feel any pain, it's much more comfortable. In fact, there's no pain to inject the lips if you've done a block. And the only reason people may not do a block is they don't want to be numb for an hour to an hour and a half. But most people, if you're doing much injection in the lip, the block is worth it. And we, we recommend it because I think patients have a better experience and they're not hurting. And that's, pretty, that's a pretty good deal. Uh, so the next thing we'll do is we'll use a local anesthetic that typically lasts for about an hour to an hour and a half, lidocaine. And we'll inject it into the nerves that go to the lip, upper and lower. And then that way the lips will be completely numb and we can do what we need to do. So I'm going to start injecting Laura, okay? Just gently open and close down that thing. And here we go. A little bit of a pinch here. Then we shake the lip because it just distracts and they don't feel much when you do this. You doing okay? Mm -hmm. And this is usually infinitely less discomfort than injecting the lips with a topical or a spray. So we're putting this in here and it gets numb pretty quick. Do a little massage there and this will start making the left part of the upper lip numb. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. You okay, Laura? Yes. Here comes a little pinch right here. I'm shaking you just a little bit. And again, the shaking just distracts the nervous system. It's kind of a known technique to diminish your attention to what's being done. So there's hardly any discomfort with this. Here we go for the nerve in the lower lip, right there. The other reason it's sometimes nice to block the lip is I think as, a, as the injector, as a surgeon, you know you're not hurting the patient, so you can probably do a little bit better job of fine injections when the patient you know is comfortable. So I like that for that reason, if nothing else, that the patient's comfortable. I'm going to turn you a little to your left. Feeling pretty numb here? Mm -hmm. Okay. And here we go with the last little injection for the nerve on this side. And then we can do the filler almost immediately because the nerve block is usually right away. And people feel like they're drooling, so they're always dabbing their <laughs> lips, but they, they feel like they're drooling, but they're not. We would never let them do that, you know. So you feel pretty numb here mm -hmm. and numb here. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, like I said, in some people, there's a percentage where the nerves don't cross across and you have to put a little bit more in the middle of the lips, so we'll do that. Lower lip feel pretty numb? getting there. Okay. The lips here are a perfect fullness. They're natural. They're naturally full. And we're just, just trying to line the border of the lip to make the border a little more distinct, even though it's already pretty distinct, of the upper and lower lip. And that doesn't require much product. Today we're using Vobello, which is really something we use often in the lip. We also use Restylin. They're both hyaluronic acid products. It probably doesn't make a large difference which one of those you use, but there are different thicknesses or densities of the hyaluronic acid products, and we do choose those based on where we're putting it. So we're gonna start injecting here, and I'm, you're gonna have to let me know if you have any discomfort. I usually use a magnifier just to make sure because we're along the lip line. In this case, there's a couple of vertical lines that I'm gonna inject. So I'm gonna put just a bit right there, comfortable. Mm -hmm. And these vertical lines, which in this case are very minimal, are just starting to be noticeable. And this kind of makes sure that they don't become more noticeable. <clears throat> and you can see there's no movement because there's no pain, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And now we're going to go along the lip border. So we put it in the up and down lines. And if you open your mouth just slightly, now we're going to go right along the border. And again, there's no discomfort because she's numb. And so as the injector, it makes it really nice. This just gives a little definition. It doesn't really make the lip bigger, except for a little swelling temporarily. And you can go right along the lip line 
and give the lip a little definition. And that's really all we're planning to do on that side. So we'll go do the same thing on the other side. So you can see we've just enhanced it just slightly to give it definition. And of course, if you overfill the border, that's when you really start seeing some bizarre looks because that border in a young person is nice and distinct, but if you overfill it, it's just simply bizarre. So you have to be careful, especially as we all get older, if we try and recreate what we had when we were in our 20s, we don't necessarily look good. We're just trying to recreate some fullness to keep it from looking as flat or less distinct as it, as it, as it gets as we get older. That's the border where the white meets the pink. So now we're gonna go on the other side. I'm gonna turn you this way, Lauren. And we're gonna do this side. Let me see if there's any vertical lines there. There's one right there. So I'm gonna inject this little vertical line right here. And there's a little hint of one there. Okay, now we're gonna go and treat the vertical, the, the vermilion border. Excellent. So we treated the vermilion border on both sides, and now we'll put some across the Cupid's bow, the part right in the middle. And then we'll put just a drop in the column, the filtral column, and we're done with the upper lip. And we've used just a quarter of a cc, not much product at all. If anybody's prone to fever blisters, we'll often make sure they have, you know, an antiviral medication available in case they feel one coming on. If you've never had one, you're not likely to have it because of the filler. But if you've had fever blisters before, then sometimes just the trauma of injecting can make them come out because they always live in the nerve root. So here we go with the column. I'm going to put just a drop right at the column and a little bit in the column here. And that is it for the upper lip. And do just a very gentle massage. Any pain? None. Good. Okay, so we'll do the lower lip next. The upper lip is the one you have to be the most cautious of as far as making it look less than natural. The lower lip you can stand a lot more filler and still look normal. Okay, and the lower lip, there really aren't any up and down vertical lines, so we're just going to inject along the lip line. And sometimes we'll put it right under the border, right in the corner where it starts to sink. And it helps kind of push the lip up a bit. And we'll go on the other side and we'll be done. I'll turn you this way more. Just lean your chin up in the air just a bit. Thank you. And that is it. You did great. And open your mouth just a bit. And it's much easier with someone who starts out with relatively full lips because it just maintains. You're really not trying to make them much fuller and they already look full. So it's just much easier if the lip has a little fullness to start with. And it's the thin lip that you're trying to make look like a full, natural, large lip that's very difficult uh, to achieve that goal. Okay, you're great.